Greetings loves, it is I, Tactical Girlfriend. So good to have you back here on the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing how to assemble an AR-15 lower. Specifically, this is going to be the first part in a series of two videos where I'm assembling a full AR pistol. Uh, keep in mind that this is a pistol build and not a rifle build. ATF, please do not shoot my cyborg cat, please. Thank you. With the aftermarket being what it is, air pattern rifles and pistols are fairly easy to acquire all the parts that you need for to build one. Also, the tools that you need to assemble one are generally pretty commonly found around the house, save for just a few specialized ones to get the job done just right. I generally recommend building your own whenever you can if you're trying to acquire an AR. Um, it's nice for one to just have a fun little project to do, but also it's great to know exactly what's going into your weapon and customize that around your needs and your budget. This is absolutely the way to go in my opinion. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna start with my lower here and I'm gonna add my upper to it. I'm a little bit of what you might call a gunsmith. Just kidding, we're actually gonna to move to the bench where I'm going to start assembling my lower from scratch. Okay, I got my work area set up here. We're ready to actually start building this thing. Now, I do want to cover some of the tools I'm going to be using here. I'm going to try to keep this down to most household items that you'd commonly find, not so much focusing on specialized tools, but there are a few that I do recommend. The first couple things I got here is a vise and a Magpul Bev block. These things specifically help you mount and stage the parts of your gun a little bit easier. These are generally more useful when you're trying to assemble an upper assembly. However, the lower is also still going to benefit from this. Next, you're gonna need a long flathead screwdriver to reach inside the grip and secure it to the lower. You're also probably gonna want a hammer. Something with a nylon head would be nice, but this is all I got lying around and it's just gonna have to do. Have some pliers to hold damn things in place. A punch or two. These punches are actually from an AK-74 cleaning kit. Do recommend these. A fistful of Allen wrenches. Some blue Loctite. A simple razor. A torque wrench an armorer's wrench, specifically for a castle nut and torque wrench attachment, and a punch, specifically for staking the castle nut once it's completely tightened. Next, I wanna talk about the parts I'm using for this build. This is the Aero Precision M4E1 stripped lower, the LaRue MBT-2S trigger, a Magpul K2 grip, a Magpul bad lever, a Radian Talon 45 degree safety selector, a Voltor A5 buffer system with the A5-3 buffer weights, an SV Tactical SVA-3 pistol brace, how do you like them apples ATF, a BCM QD receiver end plates, a lower parts kit from B King's Firearms in pink, because Tactical Girlfriend can have a little of pink as a treat. Okay, we're gonna start by installing the mag catch. Simply take the receiver and the mag catch, drop it in on this side, flip it over, holding it in place with your finger, Drop the spring over the mag catch. Okay, next we're gonna take our mag catch button. We're gonna put tension on the spring, close it down, get it started on the screw here on the threaded end of the mag catch. Might take a little bit of pressure here. There we go. Once you got it started here, just give it a nice couple turns there. Once you've got it secured here decently enough, you're going to press it in to the receiver and you're going to flip it around, hold it down, and you're actually going to just turn this one until you basically can't turn it anymore. Yep, hit it right there. Okay. We're going to take a look at this. It's definitely not in far enough, so we're going to want to press this in even further and keep turning this thing. You basically want the axis of the mag catch to be flush with the button itself. It should be pretty evident once you're there. Still got a bit of ways to go here. All right, with the assistance of pushing this button in further with another tool, I eventually got it deep enough in to finally secure this and get the axis of the mag catch nice and flush with the button. Basically what you're trying to accomplish is you just want to make sure that this doesn't have any chances of actually rotating out of place when you're doing a reload. That needs to stay well within the bounds of the receiver itself so that it doesn't get knocked out of place and then you can't get the mag catch back in place. Okay, next we're going to install the bolt catch. You're going to need the bolt catch itself, the bolt catch plunger, the bolt catch spring, 
and the bolt catch pin. However, this one actually is a screw-in insert for the Aero Precision M4E1. Otherwise, you'd normally hammer this thing in and it's a little awkward, so this definitely helps make the job easier. Okay, so first of all, get your bolt catch plunger, insert it into the spring, insert the entire assembly right here where it lives, right beneath the bolt catch. Next, I'm gonna install the bolt catch over everything. Then I'm gonna squeeze things in here and then I'm gonna add this little bit here to screw in. Everything is lined up nice and neat. Just need to actually secure this by screwing it in with this Allen key. All right, retaining pin is fully in place now. Okay, I'm ready to start installing a trigger now. One little caveat with this one though, this is the LaRue MPT-2S, which comes with the disconnector already installed and pinned in place. If yours is not like this and it's not assembled, you will need to add this spring right here and then hold the disconnector in place as you put it into the receiver. It should stick in place pretty well, however, you will want to be gentle with it when you're doing this process. Also, you want to make sure that the spring here is oriented as such, so that when you drop it into the receiver, tension is created by pushing it down. So we're going to start by dropping this sucker in and lining everything up. Great. Once I got the trigger lined up properly with a hole here in the receiver, I'm going to add the pin in. Should pop right in place as long as the tolerances are designed properly. Okay, I'm going to install the bev lock on the vise here. It is going to be offset because the axis of the vise will not allow proper clearance. So I'm just gonna have to deal with that. Okay, now it's time to install the hammer. I did opt to put the receiver on the bev block here because this process does take quite a bit of attention. You also may need to use a hammer to actually drive the pin in for the hammer itself. First, you're gonna wanna make sure that the hammer spring has the loop resting under the hammer like this. Then you're gonna actually place this with these two prongs resting over the springs for the trigger dropping it in place like that. And then we're gonna push this into place. And with some finagling, we're gonna get this lined up properly with the holes for the pin. All right. I got it. Now, for a function check, I'm gonna lock it back like that. You don't wanna just let this thing fly forward, otherwise it will hit your bolt release here. So just put your thumb over it. There we go. It works. Next, I'm going to install the safety here. We do need to put the detent for the safety selector face on the radiant talon specifically. So that just slides right on like that. Might need a punch to hold it in place properly. Okay, now I got the face of the selector installed properly. I'm going to drop it in here. I'm gonna orient it towards the fire position here. And then I'm gonna pop this on the bed block Put the detents in the hole on the other side here, pointy side down, and then we're going to make sure that that's in there properly, good. And now I'm going to grab my Magpul K2 grep and install the spring for the detent, which goes into the corresponding hole right here. Now you're gonna have to hold this in place and kind of carefully install this here as such. Make sure it lines up properly. Pop it in. Great. Now I'm going to grab my screw for the K2 grip and my long screwdriver. Okay, I actually took this off the bev lock here because it's easier to let gravity kind of do its work if you angle this properly to align the screw with the uh, grip hole there and then screw it in. 
Let's see how that going. Should be pretty good here. Okay, now I'm gonna pop it back up on here and just kinda finish tightening it down. Okay, it's just hand tight, it's nothing fancy. That's good enough. Okay, so functions check again. Seems like a very positive detent there. That feels great. Now we're gonna go on safe here. Make sure that this doesn't release. Nope, fire, perfect. Reset, good. Back on safe. Great, works like a charm. Okay, now we're gonna install the takedown pins. The forwardmost takedown pin is gonna be the longer of the two, so just keep that in mind. We're gonna grab the takedown pin detent spring, install it on the right side on the front section of this receiver. Okay, so I got my detent spring in there. I'm gonna grab a detent with pliers, grabbing it from the middle here, and I'm gonna guide it in very gently. Don't wanna launch it out. Once I've got it in place, I'm gonna take this razor blade and just squeeze it in. Now I'm gonna take the long takedown pin here and start installing it. Once I've got it in place in the first rung here, I'm gonna let go of the razor blade and I'm just gonna push it right in. Now I have a captive takedown pin. Great. That's solid. Okay, so moving to the rear here, we're gonna install the rear takedown pin as such. Already got it in place. Next, I'm going to insert my detent here through the back faceplate area, and then push the spring right in behind it, and that's where we want that. Next, I'm going to take my buffer retainer and spring. I'm going to install that spring inside the buffer retainer and that is then going to go right into this slot right here where the buffer will reside and be stopped at. Keep that in place there. We're gonna put this back on the bev lock. Now we're ready to start installing our buffer assembly. For the buffer tube assembly, we're gonna grab our buffer tube and the castle nut. We're gonna put the castle nut on here with the teeth facing towards the rear of the buffer tube. And we're gonna screw this on as far back as it'll go. Then grab your rear receiver faceplate. Should slide right on. There we go, okay. Now we're gonna actually screw this on to the rear of the lower receiver here. Mind the spring here for the detent. You just wanna make sure that you're clearing that and you're gonna wanna stop as soon as you start hitting it with the faceplate here. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to that spring there. I do want to stop there and take this off of the bath lock here. Our buffer stop right here needs to be depressed before we start to screw this any further in. And meanwhile, we're going to take that spring and just kind of tuck it on under there after every rotation with a faceplate using your razor just to help it along there. Okay, so I'm running into the point where the buffer is actually hitting the very tip end of the buffer retainer. So we do wanna back off one full rotation so that this all lines up properly. And 
just like that. Now we're gonna press this in so that the detent spring is flush. And then we're gonna finish drawing this castle nut further in and tighten that in as so. Okay, great. Castle nut is currently hand tight. Okay, now the armor is wrenched in place on the castle nut. I'm going to grab my torque wrench roughly at a semi close to 90 degree angle. Give it a good twist. Okay, I think that's good. I kind of screwed up the castle nut finish, but whatever, it's not a big deal. This thing's gonna get beat up anyway. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to stake down the castle nut here. You can see a small indent in the castle nut between the rear end plate here and the castle nut. You're gonna try to move metal from the end plate into that little notch. So you're gonna place the punch just shy of the edge there, not too far back at an almost vertical angle, displacing that metal material into that notch. Check your alignment, start beating away. Okay, I got both points staked in. It's not pretty, but it's gonna do the job. And I'm probably gonna cold blue this as soon as I'm done constructing the whole thing here, just to make sure that there's no corrosion that does appear later on down the line. Next, I'm going to go ahead and install my buffer spring. Holding that in place now with the retainer there, I'm going to then install the buffer. There we go. Next, we are going to add the brace. Thanks ATF. We are going to slide this on, pull the adjuster lever all the way down and lock it in place. Now we got a brace on it. Okay, the last point of business I have here is to install my Magpul Bad Lover on the bolt catch. Simply align it over onto the right side of the bolt catch. I'm also gonna grab this screw right here and just apply a very small dab of blue Loctite to it. Try to get that on the very end of the threads, the rest will follow. Then line this piece up behind the bolt catch here so that the hole aligns with the bad lever, like that. Then drop that screw in, grab the provided wrench and screw it in, just like that. Seems to be about as tight as I can get it by hand here, just making sure that I got this as secure as I can. Yeah, 
That should be good. And there you have it. That is a completely assembled AR lower. Well, I really hope that this information was useful to some folks out there. If you enjoyed this content, go and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell too. As always, I want to give you a huge shout out and thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. I couldn't do this without you. If you want to help pitch in, go to patreon.com slash tactical GF. See the end of the video for the names of my biggest contributors. Well, yeehaw, that's my AR-15 lower assembly video. I really hope you all enjoyed this. Please be good to each other out there. And as always, please take care. Bye.